Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Serial killers seem to be one of the hottest media topics these days. In recent years, many documentaries and movies have been made detailing the lives of such killers. But what causes this widespread fascination with true crime, and more importantly, is it wrong to be interested in true occurrences of brutal depravity? Criminologist Dr. Scott Bonn says that the appeal of consuming true crime media is simple. Serial killers excite and enthrall people. Much like traffic accidents and train wrecks, people don't want to look, but they can't look away. Dr. Bond likens true crime to the horror genre. They can be considered adult scary stories. Many of us like to be scared. We experience an endorphin rush as a result of our fear, but we want to obtain that fear in a controlled way that is not actually dangerous. Dr. Bond goes on to say that serial killers are so extreme in their brutality and so seemingly unnatural in their behavior that society is riveted by them. Many people are morbidly drawn to violence with serial killers because they can't comprehend their actions but feel compelled to. The popularity of gore sites supports this argument. In fact, some of the most brutal videos online have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times, and in some cases, millions of times. The reality is, morbid curiosity, for whatever reason, seems to be a natural human instinct. However, in some rare cases, people's fascination with such killers can lead them into becoming the exact thing in which they are obsessed with. An example of this would be the Academy Maniacs, two young serial killers who run rampant in Russia from late 2010 until early 2011. The pair brutally murdered six people in the span of five months. The pair had a particular fascination with violent content and serial killers. But who were the Academy Maniacs? The pair consisted of Artem Anufriev and Nikita Lightkin. Artem was born on the 4th of October 1992, and Nikita was born on the 24th of March 1993. Both boys were born and raised in Irkutsk, Russia. Truth be told, both boys had a difficult upbringing. Artem Anufriev was raised without a father. Childhood friends described him positively in court, however, his childhood was very difficult psychologically. Due to Artem's father leaving, his mother Nina was a bitter and twisted woman. She worked as an accountant in an insurance company, and she did not have a good influence in Artem's upbringing. According to a previous headmaster of the school in which Artem studied in, she had instructed young Artem to hate people. During Artem's early school years, he struggled and received bad grades. In turn, his mother immediately wrote statements in which she reproached teachers for adding psychological pressure on her son. When Artem was in the ninth grade, the school management was forced to look for a new physics teacher because the previous one refused to teach the class that Artem was in due to his disruptive nature. However, after some time, Artem started to turn things round. After some hard work, he started to do well in his studies. He had good marks in literature and English, and he participated in many activities and school competitions. He was taking musical lessons for the guitar and double bass, and also sang and played in a local music group that fell apart after the group's organizer left Irkutsk. However, despite Artem being seemingly on the right track, he was seen as awkward and as an outcast since first grade. It was only in senior classes where Artem matured and became more friendly. As a result, he was much more popular amongst his peers, though this came at a detriment. As Artem became more outgoing, his grades worsened, and upon the end of his school career, he only graduated with a triple passport. In a senior class, shortly before graduation, classmates shot an amateur farewell film in which they told what happiness was in their opinion. Artem's classmates, filled with positivity and the naivety of youth, expressed their opinions on what happiness is, 
However, Artem said the following, To be honest, I do not know what happiness is, but I would really like to quickly find out what it is. After he graduated from school, Artem entered the Irkutsk State Medical University and at the same time went to work as an auxiliary worker in the art museum. One constant in Artem's childhood was his friendship with a local boy by the name of Nikita Lightkin. Artem's mother Nina spoke against her son's friendship with Nikita. She believed that their communication should be prohibited because, in her opinion, Lightkin was a bad influence on her son. Though Artem ignored his mother's concerns and the pair grew closer throughout childhood. Much like his friend Artem, Nikita didn't have an ideal childhood. His mother, Marina, worked as an employee at a shoe store. Like Artem, he grew up without a father. His father was of Ossetian ethnicity. He left the family in Lightkin's early childhood. Lightkin also had a younger half-brother who shot himself after the death of his mother. Soon after, the father returned to the family, but his depression caused by the death of his second wife and the suicide of his second son did not allow him to establish contact with Nikita. His father would later return to the family sporadically, leaving young Nikita even more disappointed each time he left. Nikita was 16 years old the last time he saw his father. The two found it difficult to communicate, and as a result, Nikita's frustration and resentment of his father grew. On the surface, Nikita behaved in a quiet and calm manner, but according to his mother, he grew up very closed and uncommunicative. If a guest came to visit, Nikita would often hide away into his room. Prior to the fifth grade, Nikita was a very good student. He had exemplary behavior. He participated in creative contests and often received commendable letters from his teachers. In 2004, Nikita enrolled in the mathematics class due to his high test scores. However, his mother later stated that the other children did not accept him and made life hard for young Nikita. It was around this time where he met Artem Anufreyev, who was a year older. Litkin, by this time, was in a state of deep depression and only decided to entrust all of his problems to Artem since he received support from him in return. According to Nikita's mother, since the other boys did not like Artem, Lightkin gradually began to lose previous friends because Artem's unfriendly attitude began to spread to him, but the teenager did not worry about it, as he considered relationships with previous friends as fake children's friendships. According to Nikita's former classmate, Artur Lysenko, he said in court that Nikita lost friends due to his quick metamorphosis, which was expressed once Nikita came to school. He did not greet or talk to anyone, and then completely closed himself off. According to Artur Lysenko, this was due to the fact that Nikita was very jealous of classmates from richer families. Nikita's lack of socialization as a teenager resulted in his classmates bullying him. In the 8th grade, he began to skip school and, unlike Artem, he was expelled from 9 classes, entering college just twice afterwards, first in energy and then in construction in 2009. In the first case, he was expelled for academic failure after he failed to pass the first session. In the second case, Nikita had a conflict with a group of boys who began to bully him, but in return, he extorted money from one of the bullies and stole belongings from his home. Nikita's mother wrote a letter of complaint about the bullies, but nothing came from it. At this point, Nikita completely stopped attending classes. As a child, Nikita and his mother attended church for two years, and both were baptized. But over time, his mother Marina began paying more attention to work and going to church less and less. Then Litkin himself began to reject the church. For some time, he was engaged in music, painting, and kickboxing, but he gave it all up, devoting all of his free time to regular visits on social media networks. 
he had a lag in psychological development since childhood. Marina tried to get her son psychological help, however, psychologists had advised his mother to give him more freedom and not to restrict his personal space. However, after some time, Nikita's state of mind began to degenerate, and several years before the killings, he began to be ashamed of his mother, trying to avoid her at all costs. Outside of school, Nikita and Artem spent a lot of time together. In fact, they formed a punk rock band called The Evil Dwarfs. This group didn't last long, however, but they did manage to release one full-length album in 2008 entitled Black Streaks of Blood. Soon after, the duo created another new group, this time a band by the name of Dismembered Pugachova. The lyrics of both bands centred around violence and obscene language. Dismembered Pugachova in particular tried to be deliberately offensive with its song titles and lyrics, which was a characteristic that was heavily inspired by the American grindcore group Anal Cunt, a band that the pair had even covered a song from. Despite the band's edgy and offensive nature, many would chalk it up to them being just rebellious teenagers. However, the pair engaged in even more sinister activities and adopted extremist mentalities. Artem Anufreyev, for some time, was a member of a white power skinhead group. In certain circles, he had the nickname Fashik Natsik, but he did not participate in speeches and he was not very active. Artem tried to get his friend Nikita to join the skinheads with him, however the skinheads did not accept him due to his discrediting Ossetian descent. After the boy's arrest, Artem said that it was the communication with the skinheads that led him to commit murder. Although he had not participated in their society for very long, finding their ideology too passive and soft. A man by the nickname of Boomer, who was the unofficial leader of the Irksk skinheads, to whom Artem spoke for for a couple of months in 2009, said in court that Artem was not part of their society because his views differed from their ideology. According to Boomer, Artem simply felt hatred towards everyone, and he did not care about who he killed. The boys would read and consume various extremist content, such as the Russian book by the name of Born to Hate. The pair also had a deep fascination with serial killers. In fact, a leading theory is that the boys wanted to imitate other well-known serial killers. In fact, in 2007, the boys watched a TV program about the Bitsa Park maniac Alexander Pishukin, who committed several dozens of murders in Moscow. The pair developed an unhealthy obsession with him. In fact, Artem created the Pishukin Our President group on the internet. The duo would seek out more graphic content, and this is where they stumbled upon the Dnepro Petrosk maniacs, the boys behind Three Guys One Hammer. Artem and Nikita allegedly watched the gruesome video, and this was where they got the idea to film their crimes. Shortly before the murders, Artem's neighbours began to hear strange sounds from his apartment. Anu Freyev shouted, I hate everybody, and I will kill you, and at the same time, strange sounds were heard, as if he were beating his fists on the wall, or rushing at it with his body. There is an assumption that he beat his mother, because sometimes the neighbours would hear screams and somebody yelling to get off them. It said that at the time, Artem's relationship with his mother was so strained that at times he was afraid he wouldn't be able to prevent himself from killing her. Nikita also expressed a similar rage. He almost stopped communicating with his family. His depression intensified and he began to suffer from insomnia. By this point, the boy's antisocial behaviours were on full display, and they were a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. The boys would conduct practice runs for potential victims, and they did this for about a week. They walked the same way from the state university every day from 6pm till 10pm. They did this for about a week, and did not attack anyone. On the 1st of December 2010, 
the evil duo saw 12-year-old boy Daniel Semyonov, who studied at the same school as them. Semyonov was going for a ride on the hill with his snow scooter. Nikita, noticing the boy, offered Artem to kill him, to which he agreed. According to Artem, Nikita likened Semyonov as a weak victim, unable to provide strong resistance. After catching the child, Nikita stunned him from behind with a blow to the head with a mallet, and when he fell, Artem continued to beat him with a baseball bat. Nikita then drove a penknife into Semyonov's temple. The boys then left the scene. The victim's mother and brother found the child. At this point, he was somehow still alive. An ambulance team was called to the scene, but they got stuck in a traffic jam, and by the time of the arrival, the boy had already died. At that time, Semyonov's parents did not think that their son could have been a murder victim. In fact, experts considered the case to be an accident, writing everything off that the boy allegedly hit a birch tree at very high speeds on his snow scooter. On the 16th of December 2010, 20 meters from the place where Daniil Semyonov was killed, the body of 69-year-old Olga Pirog, a leading researcher at the Institute for Solar and Terrestrial Physics, was found. The woman, as it turns out, was killed in the same way as Semyonov, but this time she was murdered more quickly, which was later done to the other victims. On her body, around 30 knife wounds were counted. It was a frenzied attack, but her money and jewellery were untouched. For some time, it was mistakenly believed that Olga was the first victim killed by the pair, since Semyonov's death was recognised as an accident. In relation to this attack, the criminals made an audio recording in which they discussed how they would kill her, and then they recorded the murder process. On the 1st of January 2011, at around 5 o'clock in the morning, Artem and Nikita attacked a homeless man who was alone, sleeping near some garbage cans. They inflicted around 40 blows of blunt force trauma, smashing his head with their mallets and hammers. He later died in hospital, but authorities could never establish his identity. On the 21st of February 2011, Alexander Petrovich Maximov, who was drunk and returning home from visiting his sister, was killed by the maniacs. The man had his jaw and head completely destroyed. Nikita had shot the victim in the head and eyes numerous times with an air pistol, and Artem tried to remove the victim's injured eyeballs while he was still alive. However, he couldn't do it due to his ignorance towards the human anatomy. It's also believed that the man was partially decapitated. On the 11th of March 2011, in the early hours of the morning, Artem and Nikita picked out their next victim, who was a homeless man by the name of Roman Faizulin. This murder took place right outside Artem's apartment building. Artem and Nikita ambushed the man. They shot him twice in the face with the air pistol, and then they dragged him into some bushes, where they began stabbing him in the head, groin, and chest with knives. Nikita tried to cut off the victim's hand. However, he couldn't do it as the knife was too small. However, he managed to cut off the victim's little finger. Later, Artem took a photo of the corpse, behind which a bloody trail was shown from the window of his apartment. On the 1st of April 2011, the Academy Maniacs killed their sixth and final victim, this time being 63-year-old homeless woman, Alevtina Koidina. It's believed that she was stabbed to death. At this point in time, the boys were so cocky and so sure that they would never be caught. In fact, so much so that they even filmed some of the cruelty inflicted on their last victim, Alevtina. The video soon made the rounds on social media. In fact, it's believed that Artem sent the video to one of his online friends from St. Petersburg by the name of Ilya Ustinov, whose nickname online was Solomon Gojo. Allegedly, it was Solomon who uploaded the video online for all to see. The video itself is around 2 minutes long and is extremely graphic. 
The video opens up, and the maniacs are wandering around in a derelict location. The area is littered with trash and boxes. The pair walk over to a pile of boxes, and laying next to the boxes is the lifeless body of 63-year-old Aleftina Kadina. At this point, she's already been murdered, and it appears that she's been stabbed, as well as having her jaw crushed by a hammer. The boys gleefully mock Aleftina's corpse. One of the boys, which I believe to be Nikita, then takes the knife, and he starts poking the victim's head with it. He then takes a piece of paper to ensure not to get blood on his hands. Nikita can be heard stressing about getting blood on himself. He then takes the victim's ear, making sure to grab it with the paper, and he then slices it off with a knife. The boys would keep the ear, and would later place it outside the college in which they studied. Once Alavtina's ear has been cut off, Nikita then takes the knife and jams it into her eye socket. He's trying to remove her eye, but he fails. Following this, he then takes the knife again and rams it into the victim's mouth, laughing as he does so. The way the boys act in the video is extremely reminiscent of the Dnepro Petrosk maniacs who filmed Three Guys One Hammer. They inflicted unimaginable cruelty without a care in the world. After the murder of Aleftina, the net was starting to close on the maniacs. After the recovery of the bodies, panic set in in the town of Akadem Gorodok. The townspeople were now aware that a serial killer or serial killers were on the loose. Early on in the investigation, panic was caused by misinformation about the killings, which is why the most common theory amongst the townspeople was that it was a single maniac and he was about 30 years old. Initially, Artem and Nikita never once came under suspicion, because according to the words of lead investigator Maxim Komnyak, everyone looked for strangers, and these guys were amongst their own in Akadem Gorodok. Ultimately, it was the maniac's arrogance that led to their arrest. Prior to the murder of Alevtina Kaidina, Nikita had borrowed a video camera from his uncle. It was the same camera that was used to record the mutilation of Alevtina's body. Upon returning the camera to his uncle, Nikita had made one crucial mistake. He forgot to delete the video. Needless to say, Nikita's uncle found the video and subsequently handed it into the police. After murdering six people and brutally attacking nine more, both Artem and Nikita were arrested in April of 2011. The legal proceedings and trial took around two years to complete. Artem pleaded guilty to one murder and was sentenced to life in a special regime colony. Nikita, still underage at the time of sentencing, received only a 24-year prison sentence. In fact, Nikita's sentence was then reduced to 20 years due to his age when the crimes were committed. Upon being sent to prison, Nikita expressed remorse for his crimes and kept his head low. He didn't seek out media attention. However, Artem, on the other hand, during an interview with journalists in April 2015, said that he was not remorseful for the murders whatsoever. In fact, he didn't even consider himself guilty. He even said to the journalists, Your colleagues helped me get here. I see you need something from me all of the time. He then told the journalist he would talk only for compensation. During another interview in 2017, Artem claimed that he was studying law at the University of Latvia. It said that Artem hasn't found prison life all that bad. In fact, the only thing he complains about in his prison letters is that there's no TV. In regards to Nikita, despite being sentenced to only 20 years, which would have meant a release in 2031, he was found dead in the early morning of the 1st of December 2021. It said that he died of blood loss due to him slitting his own wrists. With Nikita dead, neither one of the maniacs will ever set foot on the streets again. Artem will spend the rest of his life and die in prison. And that is the story of the Academy Maniacs. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
if you can enjoy this sort of content. As always, thank you guys for the support. It's much appreciated. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the bonus video that I put out this week. I will try and do it more often, but my problem is just time. If I have time, I'll try and get you guys some more bonus videos. But as always, thank you guys for the support. It's much appreciated. It's been a long week, so it always, you know, always makes me smile when I see positive comments and, you know, comments of encouragement. So thank you guys so much. As always, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.